Hello everybody, welcome to the first video in my series about making an online Pokemon game. I'm trying something new with this video, so hopefully you enjoy it. I should start off by saying these tutorials are not for the faint of heart. I'll be going through the code fast, so you should have some programming knowledge already. If I didn't go fast, the series would take forever and feel extremely slow. If something's not working, you can always ask in the comments and I'll do my best to help. That being said, this first video will be setting up the files and making sure everything is downloaded. So to start off, we need to get all the data files dealing with Pokemon, seeing how I don't want to draw the Pokemon in itself. So if you come to this link, which will be in the description, you can click here where it says download Pokemon Essentials. And then just click it, download, and it'll download. But I'm going to cancel that because I already have it downloaded, as you can see. Just put it somewhere in your folders that is safe, that you'll remember. So we're going to put in the files as we need them. So just remember where they are. And in here, if you just open it up, you'll get all of this. This was originally... This Essentials file was originally for a program called RPG Maker XP, but we're not using that. So a lot of this stuff we won't be using, but it's there anyway. So you can just ignore it though. What we want is graphics and PBS, and some of these other ones we'll use later, but for now, graphics contains all the images. So if you come to Battlers, you can see every Pokemon and its front and back, shiny versions, female versions, everything. If you come to characters, you can see stuff like plants, um, characters, which is down here somewhere. Yeah, characters. There's some character battlers, like the images for the actual people. There's other things in here that you can look at if you want. But there's also this file called PBS, which contains a bunch of data files with stuff like abilities, moves right here. And these contain things like the ID, the name of the abilities, the stats, what type of ability it is, and all of that. So that makes it really easy because we can just call on this data file to get all the information about all the spells. But the most important one is this one called Pokemon, which is a list of every Pokemon, the name, what ID it is, what type it is, base stats, and a bunch of other things that is going to come in really handy later on. And this also makes it really easy because if we use these files and you wanted to create your own Pokemon, you just come to the bottom. Oh. I can get there. Jesus. This, yeah, if you come to the bottom, I think. Okay, that was why. If I come to the bottom, there we go. You can just copy and paste and add in a new number. Yeah, okay, so if you add in a new number and then you can change all the stats about it, like the name, the. and just change everything about it to make a new Pokemon, whatever Pokemon you want. But we're not going to be doing that for this series. We're going to be using all the Pokemon that's already there and just creating our own game. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is make a file somewhere you'll remember. I'm going to do it on the desktop and just create a new folder for where all the programming is going to go. So I'll just create it called Pokemon Online since it's an online game. And now we have this file where we can put in all of our JavaScript files. And normally I would have us just start from scratch and just make everything just as if we were starting out. But a lot of this first video, these first videos are going to be setting things up. And it would just take way too long to go through step by step making a server setting up graphics and everything like that. So what I've done is I have a Git repository that has all of the beginning things that we'll need so that 
we can just fly through the first bit really fast. So there'll be a link to this in the description as well. You just click clone download, download zip, and then have it open up. And if I'm going to, I'll open it up. It's under my downloads and you can just extract it. So give it a second. Just waiting. Okay, there we go. And now click it. I can just take this public and server, drag those in into your folder. So now, I, now we need to edit this code because this is just a bunch of code. So we need a way to edit it. I'm going to use something called Atom. You don't have to use Atom. You can use any text editor you want. But Atom is my choice for a text editor because it's I just find it clean and it's good for files. So I'll just open it up and then open up that file that we created. So under desktop, Pokemon Online, and just open that up. Okay. Now on the left, we can see that public and server file that we added in. So if I click already, it's got some things open. You might not have anything open. So if you don't, just click server, core, and that's what we're going to be looking at right now. And I can get rid of this line right here because it's not needed. It was just a test file. And I can also get rid of this color.red. Okay. So now we need to open up command prompt. So CMD. So if you, I have mine on my start bar down here, but if you don't, click on the bottom left and just type in CMD and open up command prompt. The way command prompt works is it's always looking at a file. So when right now it's looking at the file users dot users slash Michael. However, we want to start looking at this file right here, the server file. So if I come here, here I have it already open. So you just come to the server, click on the address bar at the top, and push control C for copy. Then type in CD space and then paste that in. Push enter. Now it's looking at that server file. And now we can perform actions within this file. Okay. So one more thing we need to download. So a lot of stuff is set up already. So I have um, a server file right here that just sets up the server. So a lot of the code is done. But in order to, for the code to run, we need to download one more thing. Node.js. Again, link in the description. You just go to Node and download it. It'll come up with an installer. You just install it. I'm not going to because I already have it installed. And if you want to make sure that it's installed properly, just come to the command prompt and type in Node. And then it'll come up with this little arrow, and that means it's working. So you just push control. It's by the way, this is a um, like a I guess a command line for JavaScript. So I can type in JavaScript here. So like var i equals zero and then type in i and it just write JavaScript code. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to push control C, control C and just get out of that. So it's working. So now we need to install some node libraries. So in order to install node libraries, usually you type in npm, node package manager, and then you type in install and install the package. But first, I don't want to install it in this server. I want to install it inside the libraries. So we need to make the command prompt look in the libraries folder. So I'm going to type in cd for change directory. And then type in, then come into the libraries, copy, paste that in so it's looking in the libraries folder. And by the way, I know there's easier ways to do it, but I just want to be consistent. And then I'm going to, now I'm going to type in npm. And before I do install, let's do init, npm init. So that's short for initialize. Then I'm just going to push enter a few times. I don't need to worry about any of this right now. Push enter. And it creates this package.json file. And this is just everything we just typed in. But we can ignore that. Well, actually, I'm going to leave it open for a second. You'll see why. Now I can do npm install. And there's two things we need to install. Install express, so 
npm install express dash dash save and that'll install so I'm we're installing express and socket.io and these are both used for making a server easier you could technically do everything without these but this just makes life a lot easier so now I'm going to do npm install socket.io dash dash save and when I install these it adds its dependencies and it'll add express and then the version and as soon as this is done it will add socket io so yeah there we go socket io okay and that's it that's all we need to install for now so now i want to go back to the server file so i'm going to click here copy that copy the address and then type in cd space and paste in that address and now it's looking back at the server so to make sure this is working properly this is the moment of truth type in node core and node co core is just this file here the main one if you change the name of that you would type in node whatever but node core it says starting server pokemon okay so that means it's working properly and you can see it doesn't go back to showing this because the server is currently running if i want to stop the server you type in Control c and it'll close the server and then if you want to open it back up node core and there you go so it's working and we can confirm this even further we come to our desktop type in localhost 3000 we should get a black screen push Control shift i to open up the console and we'll be using this for now on so this is working so now i can close this core we're done with the server for now let's open up public public is essentially the client side instead of the server side programming go to source which is short for sort um actually i don't know what it's sort for but it's just the the code the source code i guess so here in the main which is what we're going to be using this is what matters this is the i guess the core script that gets run we're going to open it up and you can see it's really simple everything's pretty much set up and there's two functions that matter setup and step setup is a function that came with something called p5.js which we're using it's already installed for you guys it should be and then step which so the way these work is setup runs one time at the start of the program as soon as the program starts up setup runs step runs consistently every frame so every 30 frames it'll run this function so if i were to run let's say console dot oh caps locks it on console dot log hello and i refresh it it says hello right there however if i put this in the step event it's going to every frame it's going to say hello just constantly till it's see it keeps adding up so it's just going to keep doing that every frame so that's the difference between setup and initialize or setup and step sorry client this is where we're initializing a client and we're doing it under localhost 3000 if once we you put it onto a different server or like um yeah, it's on a server where other people can use it, you'll just change what this says to that, and it'll be should be good. Screen initialize. Screen is just what makes the screen black, which it creates a canvas. So if I just comment that out and refresh this, there's a small one instead, and it's and you can get rid of that if you want to, but we'll be using it to be we want it to be big. This just makes it so that there's a a canvas. If you know what a, if you know JavaScript, you know what a canvas is. You should, and it just creates a canvas that's always the size of the window. Okay, so I can end the video here since we've set everything up, but I want to show you a couple of things that come in this package that we'll be using just so you are familiar with it. 
So the first thing, if under this entities I have this test entity called player, and entities are essentially um, things like rocks, players, trees, anything really honestly in a game, and every entity has a list of properties and these properties define what it can do so maybe there's a property for position that says where is it located in the world uh, maybe a property for a graphic which says what am i going to draw at that position and things such as that okay so i'm just going to start off by well let's test one let's let's make a graphic so if I'm going to open up, not that, oh, where do I have this? So I'm just going to go find my, um, where I have all my, my Pokemon resources. So my graphics, so I open this up, graphics, and then open up the characters. And I'm just going to look for boy, I believe it was called. Yes, boy run. I'm going to copy that and then put it in, I need to put it in the in public. I'm going to create a new folder called res, sort for resources, and this will be where all our images and text documents are. So, boy, run. So, we'll just use this for now. Now, in order to load that, so we need to load first load that resource. In order to do that, we're going to type a new raw image and then the name of it, boy, run. And you don't need to put the .png because that's just the explicit. It already knows. And then I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say, I want to first create a new property called we'll call it position. So this dot pose pos short for position equals a new position. And every property needs a reference to the entity. So this and then the position 300 300 that's just an arbitrary number that i'm going to use for now and in order to add the property i'm just going to pass in this dot position into that array okay now the player has a position so now let's add in a graphic so this dot image equals a new graphics needs a reference to itself this and then it needs a position so this dot position that's so that we know where to draw the image. And then finally the name of the image. Boy run. If I push put this in, I can say this dot image as a new property. Okay. And let's just create a new player now. And if I come back here and I refresh, it's drawing that image. However, this is weird because well, we don't want to draw this whole thing. We only want to draw one what we'll call cell of this so instead of drawing of the full entire image I created there's a different type of property that we can use called anim, uh, animator sorry had to figure out how to spell it and there's more properties or more not property but um arguments four by four so this says what's the width of it what's the height of it so now if I use that I refresh there we go it just draws one of those little cells okay so now by the way the, if you want to see all the properties that I have it's under this folder called properties and then we're using graphics but there's also this position one which is this and you can if you want you can look through these and see what they are they're pretty simple a lot of them this one not as much but you know you can look through them if you want later we'll be adding our own properties so that we can add in special things but these are the ones that i created for now just to get things rolling get the ball going okay we can add in a function into a entity called step and this will be run every frame just like this right here so if i type in step and i do I can say this dot position dot y plus let's say plus equals two. Now if I now it'll move downward. 
but let's say we wanted to animate because if you looked at the boy run there's an animation where it's a running animation and it cycles to the right so another thing we can add is we can say this dot image dot animate the x so animate x is a function so now it'll just move to the right one so that's what animate x does so it'll just move to the right if you did animate y it would go down the list of cells i suppose if i hope that makes sense so i run this it's animating but that animation is running really fast way faster than it should and so we want to slow that down so there's one more argument we can add in to the animator which is the speed at which it animates so i'm just gonna set that to point two so it animates slower and then now it animates a little slower and it looks a little more natural there is a problem where if you want to go above one it doesn't really work so just keep between zero and one and it should be fine zero will just obviously make it not oh i guess zero doesn't work oh yeah i know why it doesn't work but um so don't do zero i guess if you don't want it to animate just don't animate it and then it will animate but that's pretty much it i don't think there's anything else i wanted to show you guys next time we're going to be writing a program for tile sets and i'll show you more about that now but if you want to look through here there's this folder called tile sets and we're going to be using this really big tile set called outside if we zoom in it's really big and it's just a bunch of tiles so i hope you know how tile sets work where we're going to be working the same way kind of like how this is where we'll have a bunch of frames or cells that we can just call from and draw or something and what we're mainly going to be doing uh, i already have it set up so where you can easily draw make a tile set and draw a cell but with something like this this is so big like do you know it would be hard to figure out oh yeah what's the x and y position of this one cell right here you don't want to have to go through and count them all by hand so we're going to next time write a program that allows us to that'll show us the entire tile set and then we can hover over a specific cell and then click it and it'll tell us what's the x and y position of it so that we can just use that and when we're programming in the video after that we'll be making a, another program that'll be a map maker i don't know if that's, there's a better name for it but yeah essentially just making a map maker and then once we have a map maker we'll see what happens from there and we'll just continue on if you guys want to see anything specific after that you can always request it so that's it for now until next time see ya